Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the craziest little mini PCs that I've ever put together on the channel. It's no secret that I love these tiny Ryzen powered mini PCs and you know, I'm actually a big fan of these iGPUs, even the older Vega. Can't wait for some newer ones with that RDNA 2 to be released. But until then, I figured I'd go ahead and just make an awesome little mini gaming PC. As you can see, we've got a tiny Ryzen powered PC and a monstrous GPU here. The mini PC I'm going to be using in this build is the B-Link SER4. I recently did a review on it. It's powered by a Ryzen 7 4800U. It's not an H variant, but it does a pretty good job, especially when you set that wattage correctly. These little mini PCs don't have PCI slots, but they do have M.2 slots. And originally I was going to go with something like an RTX 3060, just a little smaller. It'll still put out some good performance. But then I was like, might as well throw one of the biggest Radeon cards that I have at this little unit. I wanted to keep it all AMD. So I went with a Radeon RX 6900 XT. Definitely overkill. I mean, basically anything you add to this mini PC is going to be overkill. But I still wanted to see what it would do. And I got a good feeling it's going to perform really well. So like I mentioned, this is the SER4 from B-Ling. We've got 32 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte M.2, and that 4800U running it up to 45 watts. In order to get this GPU attached, one of my favorite little accessories for these mini PCs is this adapter here from a company called ADT Link. I'll leave a link in the description. We have M.2 on one end, and we have a PCIe X16 slot on the other, along with some power connectors. And there's a couple ways we can power this. We'll take a look at that in a second, but let's go ahead and get this set up inside of the mini PC. So with this unit here, we've only got one M.2 SSD, but it does support a 2.5 inch drive. So for this, I'm going to be running my operating system from the 2.5 inch drive, and we're going to be removing that M.2 SSD. Everything else is going to stay intact. And once it's installed, it looks something like this, got it all secure, but we still have that ribbon cable that will hang out of the bottom of the mini PC. And unfortunately, we cannot put the bottom on it like it sits. So I opted to use some of these little plastic standoffs just to give me a gap on that bottom cover. They fit in here really nicely, and once I put the bottom cover back on, we have that gap so I can put that ribbon cable right out of the bottom side of this unit. So we've got the dock connected to the mini PC over that M.2 slot. Now it's time to add the GPU. Like I mentioned, originally I was going to go with a much smaller card that actually doesn't pull as much wattage, and we can use a much smaller power supply, but the RX 6900 XT is definitely a hoss. It takes three 8-pin connectors, so I will have to use a pretty big power supply when you compare it to the other one I could have used with the RTX 3060 or even a lower-end card. And yeah, it fits in this dock really nicely. I was surprised it just didn't tip over because this thing is massive. But now it's time to turn our attention to powering this card. Unfortunately, an M.2 slot just doesn't put out enough wattage to power any dedicated GPU, so we will need external power. This here is a Dell power supply, it's a 280 watt, and they've set this dock up so it plugs directly in with the little 8 pin connector. It works great up to 280 watts, but the RX 6900 is going to pull more than that. And with the dock right out of the box, you only get two 8 pin connectors. So with this big card, I'm going to have to add something that puts out a lot more wattage. I have a CX750M, still a little overkill, but we do get those three 8-pin connectors, and it's definitely going to send enough power to the RX 6900 XT. And we've got long enough cables here, so I can actually route this underneath the table so the power supply isn't in the way. A little something like this. I actually think it looks pretty clean sitting here. We've got the HDMI cable coming out of the RX 6900 XT. Press the power on the mini PC, got our fan spinning on that GPU, we know it's working right now. Video signal is being sent to the monitor. And by the way, I do have Windows 11 Pro installed on that 2.5 inch SSD. All that's really left to do is install the drivers for the GPU. I also need to download a few more games, make sure everything's updated. And then we can jump right into some benchmarks, gaming, and emulation on this setup. All right, so here it is. Got a bunch of stuff installed that we're going to be testing out. Uh, first thing you might notice is the fans on the GPU aren't spinning right now, and that's because it's not at temperature. If I go into Afterburner, we can turn them on manually, just to show you that everything is connected here to this mini PC. Uh, from the Task Manager, we can take a look at that CPU. Like I mentioned, it's the 4800U, 8 cores, 16 threads. We've also got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz in this unit. I've left the dedicated Vega 8 graphics enabled on the APU, but as you can see here, we've got that big boy attached. 
the Radeon RX 6900 XT with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Now this is definitely a hoss. It's a huge card. It's heavy. It does get quite loud with those three fans on it, but it does work quite well. And I'm actually surprised that the performance is putting out, even though we're connected over that M.2 slot. Now with the 4800U, I'm running this at 45 watts. Out of the box, this little mini PC runs at 25, but we definitely want the most out of it. And by the way, this is connected to a BenQ 4K monitor. We're going to try everything in 4K, and if we can't hit those resolutions, we'll just drop it down to 1440p. But the first thing I did was run some benchmarks, and I want to give you a look at those. So here we have 3 Mark Night Raid, and this is the only comparison I'm going to give you with and without a GPU. This is the mini PC with the built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics at 45 watts. We got a total score of 15,237. And of course, we're definitely going to gain some major GPU performance by adding that 6900 XT. And with that attached, we got a 40,031. So yeah, obviously the 6900 XT is much more powerful than the built-in Vega 8 graphics. Next up, we've got 3D Mark Fire Strike, 28,929. And finally, Time Spy with a really impressive 15,930. So when it comes to the CPU side of things on this unit, we're still working with a mobile APU. We've got eight cores, 16 threads, and it's only running up to 45 watts, which is much more than the stock TDP of the 4800U. I've just upped it because I definitely want to get some better performance out of the CPU side of things. But with the CPU set up like that and the 6900 XT connected over this M.2 slot, it can definitely hang with the big boys when it comes to PC gaming. And first up, we have Halo Infinite, 4K, very high settings. We got an average of 77 FPS out of this game. And if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left-hand corner, you can see that that 4800U is only pulling around 35 watts of power. We're at 72 degrees Celsius on the CPU side of things, and that's not really bad for this mini PC. This will thermal throttle at about 93 degrees Celsius, so we're pretty far off from that. And it'll run like this all day at 35 watts. Next up, we have Forza Horizon 5, and this was actually really impressive. 4K, extreme settings, no resolution scale at all going on. So we're over ultra here, and I got an average of 87 FPS out of this game. Again, that 4800U is only pulling around 35 watts, and when it comes to Forza Horizon 5, I've had really good luck on lower end systems. Not saying that the 6900 XT is low end whatsoever, but seeing it run with this mobile APU and this GPU over M.2 so well is really impressive. I had to throw at least one fighting game in here. We've got Street Fighter V maxed out at 4K, and it's going to run at 60 just fine. This little APU actually does a pretty decent job at low-medium mix with this game here at 1080p, but adding the 6900 XT just allows you to go as high as possible with it. Moving over to God of War, we're at 4K Ultra with no Fidelity FX on whatsoever. I wanted to see what we could get out of this. And at first I got super excited, but then I noticed it started dipping on down, even below 60. I was a little thrown off by this. I'm sure at high settings we could actually get this done at 4K, but I wanted to keep it at ultra. So the next thing I figured I'd try here was just drop it down to 1440p and see what happened. And at 1440p Ultra, we're good to go. This is kind of the sweet spot here, and I really think it comes down to this card running over an M.2 slot. We just don't have the bandwidth like an X16 slot would. Another one I always like to test is GTA 5, very high settings, 4K. I knew we were going to get great performance out of this game here. We do have plenty of CPU, even though we're working with a mobile CPU. I got an average of 98 FPS, 4K, very high with this one. And the final PC game we're going to test for this video is Elden Ring, 4K, Ultra, it's doing a great job, but I did see it dip under 60. And again, I think it comes down to the bandwidth over that M.2 slot, but if I didn't have that frame counter on, I'd still say this was running at full speed, and at 4K Ultra, this game looks absolutely amazing. And if it bothers you that much, that little dip every once in a while, then you could take some of these settings down to very high, and you should be good to go with it. 
When it comes to emulation, this little mini PC does a great job kind of at the native resolution, maybe 720p. With some of the stuff, you can take it up to 1440p, like uh, GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. Just on the built-in Vega graphics. When it comes to adding a bigger GPU to your emulation setup, the main thing you're going to get from it is just higher upscaling. And here we have Skate 3 running with RPCS3 at 4K, and it runs fine on this machine. By the way, this little mini PC all by itself will run this game at full speed, 720p. So yeah, this definitely performs really well, and I kind of expected it to as long as I could get that GPU to work. I know this 4800U isn't a top-of-the-line chip, but it does a really great job, as you saw in this video. I mean, it handles 4K gaming as long as you have a decent GPU behind it. First question is going to be why, and really the only answer is because we can. I would not recommend going out and buying all of this stuff just to make a mini PC like this. You'd be much better off putting one of these RX cards in a desktop PC with a more powerful CPU. But, you know, I'm a huge fan of these mini PCs, and I figured we'd see if this would work out. And it definitely did. It actually worked much better than I thought it would. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you like these mini PC videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on so you know when I post the next one. But like always, thanks for watching.